Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Nahamadullah ta'ala, nasafiru sharwan la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Nashadu anna sayyidina Muhammadin abduhu, habibuhu wa rasuluh Wallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa azwajihi Wa sahbihi tabi khulafan rashidin mahadin min ba'di Wa zirmati ala tahkik hazzamhum anati khulafai rashidin Rasulullah ala tahkik umar al-mu'minin Hazreti Abu Bakr Umar Usman wa Ali wa ala bakir sabir tabi'in Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim ajma'in Ya ayuhal mu'min al-hazirun Takullah ta'ala Lata inna allahuma al-lazina takwa al-lazina hum muhsinun Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Salatu wa salam Ala ashrafil anbiya al-mufsalin Sayyidina maulana muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in All praises are due to Allah Lord of Universes all praises are due to Allah who is the first, the last, the manifest, the hidden, the one who has might and power over all things. All praises are due to Allah who says in the Holy Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, O you who believe, make zikr of Allah with a lot of zikr and glorify him morning and evening. He it is who blesses you and his angels bless you that he may bring you forth from darkness into light, and he is ever merciful to the believers. Their salutation on the day they meet him will be salam, and he has prepared for them a generous reward. Sadaqallah al-Azim. Allah Jalla then addressed his beloved messenger, Ali Salatu was salam, in the next ayat saying, O Prophet, truly we have sent you as a witness a bringer of good news and a warner and as one who invites to Allah but his permission by his permission and as a lamp spreading light then give the good news to the believers that they shall have from Allah a very great bounty and do not obey the disbelievers and the hypocrites disregard their harmful talk and put your trust in Allah. Allah is sufficient as trusty. Sadaqallah al-Azim. May peace and blessings be upon our Holy Prophet ﷺ and his noble family and his <coughs> blessed companions. Especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar al-Faruq, Hazrat Osman al-Ghani and Hazrat Ali al-Murtaza and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya ayuhal mu'minun, no believers, the days and nights of Ramazan, they have passed us. And the days of Eid have now passed us. These are days to be awake, not to go to sleep. These are days to take precaution, not to relax. These are days to be on guard, not to let our defenses down. Because our great enemy who was chained up and locked away for one month has been released. 
and is now hurrying and using all his energy to make those who have made progress in the way to lose that. Those who have made progress in Ramazan to lose everything that they have gained during Ramazan. Holy Prophet wasalam, said, when the month of Ramazan enters, the gates of paradise are open, the gates of hell are shut, and the shaitans and rebellious jinns, they are chained up. We spent our Ramazan, inshallah, in obedience and submission and muhabbat to our Lord. That was our intention. And with the end of Ramazan, the shaitans are now out, looking to make us lose everything we have gained. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us over and over again in the Quran al-Karim, saying that shaitan is our enemy, and we must treat him as an enemy. He is subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim O children of Adam, don't let shaitan to seduce you. In the same manner as he got your parents out of the garden and tore off from them their robes of innocence and honor, that he might manifest their shame to them. Indeed, shaitan sees you, he and his tribe, from where you see him not. Indeed, we have made the devils, the shaitans, the protectors of those without faith. Sadaqallah al-Azim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Verily, shaitan is an enemy to you, so treat him like an enemy. He only invites his party to be among the companions of the fire. Our enemy shaitan has made it his mission to destroy us and take us to the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what shaitan is saying in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Hijr. Shaitan said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim O my Lord, because you have sent me astray, I will surely make disobedience attractive to them on earth. And I will mislead them all, except among them, your chosen servants. Surah al This is the enemy that has been released after Ramazan. But for the person who is watching himself and guarding himself in Ramazan, he knows that even though shaitan was chained up, disobedience and rebelliousness did not go away. Those shaitanic characteristics, they are still inside of us. And our ego is still supporting it. Someone who was guarding himself knows that there is still anger, jealousy, a stubbornness and pride that tries to come out during Ramazan. He can see that even though shaitan was chained up in Ramazan, the influence and the power of shaitan is still inside of us because our ego is still inside of us. Our Shaykh, Sahib al Sayyid, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kabrizia Rabbani Karazasir, is explaining the presence of the inheritance of shaitan that remains in us during Ramazan, saying, during the month of Ramazan, it should have become easier. To some, it didn't. That shows that you are supporting your ego. Shaitan is not there. Shaitan is chained. That shows that you are a slave to your ego. You are not a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are a slave to the ego. Shaitan is a great ego to us. It's shaitan it is a great enemy to us. But the ego, the nafs, he is our biggest enemy. The Holy Prophet والسلام, said, your worst enemy is your nafs, which is between your two sides. The fight against this enemy, it is not easy. This fight against this enemy, Allah did not even give to the angels. Because the enemy is always with us. The fight against his enemy is not easy because it is inside of us. The fight against his enemy is not easy because it's only this desire is to destroy us. And this enemy is working with shaitan. And it is this enemy that opens up our hearts to shaitan. Sultan al-Awliya Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani Sir is talking about the danger of the ego and shaitan's relationship, saying, 
We are saying, rajim, rahim. We are escaping from shaitan to Allah to hide us. We are asking his divine shelter and his divine protection because it is so difficult for us to defeat shaitan because our egos are also going with shaitan. If our egos, our nafs, were not going with shaitan, it would be so easy. But our egos and shaitan are from the same characteristic. Shaitan was the first rebellious one towards Allah in the divine presence. The first one who was rebellious was shaitan, not anyone else before him. And he did his worst for his Lord. While it was easy, while it was right to do his best for his Lord, Allah Almighty, and shaitan was cursed and kicked out of heaven to the earth. And our egos are also, are also never accepting to be servants. Our nafs is never happy to be a servant to Allah Almighty. Therefore, the same characteristic in shaitan is with our ego. And when our nafs, our ego are with shaitan, it is like a man and woman coming together and bringing a baby. Nafs. Our ego and shaitan, when coming together, must give birth to an evil. There must be an evil born to fight against this ego. It is the greatest fight that has been put in front of mankind. Which is why the Holy Prophet is saying to his companions, we have returned from the small war to the biggest war. And they asked him, what war can be bigger than losing our lives, our property, and sacrificing everything. And he said, the biggest war, the biggest struggle, the biggest jihad, it is against your nafs. I was sure he's explaining the greatness of this jihad against the eagle, saying, what is the job of the prophets to teach mankind how to control their ego? The Holy Prophet والسلام, is coming from the war. He came to his masjid. He sat and the Sahabi Kiram came and they sat. He said to them, now we are turning from the small jihad to a greater jihad, to the bigger jihad, from a small war to a bigger war. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we are just coming from war. So many Sahabis died, so many are wounded, so much wealth disappeared. Can there be a bigger war than this? He said, yes. The war that you are going to make against your ego, against your nafs. That is the biggest jihad that you're going to make. And that jihad must continue until you enter to the grave. You cannot let it go. You cannot say, oh, today I fixed myself. My ego is complete. So I'm going to do as I like. You cannot do as you like. The more you are completing your ego, the more you're going to see Allah's order more detailed to you. You watch every word that you say. You watch every step you make. This is the reason of tariqat. Tariqat is not for you to eat each other. Tariqat is not for people to sit next to each other and hate each other. It's not that. Tariqat is to teach you, to take you from the lower self and to bring you to the highest station. If you are not doing that, then it doesn't matter what kind of shaykh you have. People didn't listen to the Prophet ﷺ. They ended up in Jahannam. Abu Jahil didn't listen to the Holy Prophet ﷺ. So many, like Abu Jahil, didn't listen to the Prophet. They were sitting in front of him. They were watching him. They didn't listen to the Prophet. Who they listened to? To their ego. To their shaitan. In the end, they are in Jahannam. Right now that we are talking, the fire is burning them. Azrael is going to come to you and to me. Maybe tomorrow, maybe earlier than that. Don't forget, the way you live, that's how you're going to die. The way you die, that's how you're going to rise. Whatever you are busy with at that time, whatever you are busy with at that time, that's how you're going to die. If you are busy cleaning yourself, your ego, you are okay. If you are busy praising your ego, you are in big trouble. 
So this is the month, Ramazan, the holiest month, the easiest month that you can take care of your ego. This is the month that the shaitans are chained. But I'm seeing that people's ego are more wild still. Shaitans are not there. You cannot say that shaitans are coming to bother you. No, it's not shaitan. It's your ego. So you become slave, so slave to your ego that you don't need shaitan anymore. Your ego is directing you left and right. Oh, believers, our duty is to fight our ego. The Holy Prophet is saying, the mujahid is the one who makes jihad against his nafs through the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. If I think the nafs is not easy, understanding the nafs is not easy. Because most say, what nafs? I have no nafs. I pray 24 hours. What? I have no nafs. I come from this lineage or that lineage. What? Me? I have no nafs. Because I am this old, that old. Most are not even understanding their greatest enemy. How can you defeat them? Most, after meeting the one who is able to explain, they don't want to understand. Understanding the tactics of the ego is not easy because it is you. Because people are saying, I'm not like that, I'm not evil. Allah, Allah, then what is the Prophet saying? Do not leave me to my ego even for a blink of an eye, the Prophet is saying. Yet, there are some claiming, I don't have ego, I don't need a shaykh, I don't need anyone to tell me what it is. That time you have been fooled. You're a slave to your ego already. Even the ego has a guide. His, gri his guide is shaitan. Even the ego needs a guide. So understanding the tricks and the traps of the ego it's not easy. Imam al-Busri is describing the treachery of the ego in the Qasidat al-Burda, saying, this is a saint. There is a friend of Allah who is saying this. Who are we to say we don't need help? He is saying, who can help me control my rebellious nafs from its selfish desires? like bridles that bring wild horses under control. Don't try to break your ego's appetite through giving it what it wants. Don't you see how food makes a glutton only more hungry? The nafs is like a baby. If you leave it alone, it will drink more and more milk. But if you decide to take it away, to wean it, it will lose its desire for milk. Distract the nafs and don't give it power. Whenever desire takes over, it either destroys or makes things dirty. Be a shepherd over it as it grazes freely in the field of actions. But if it finds the field sweet, then don't let it graze however it wants. How many times has it found some pleasure that is very good, very delightful, but it is deadly? Not knowing that poison may lay hidden inside the cream. Be on guard against the traps of false hunger and being too full. Sometimes an empty stomach is worse than a full one. Empty out every last tear from your eyes that have made themselves full on forbidden sweets and now take on a diet of regret. Oppose your nafs, oppose shaitan, disobey them. If either of them gives you advice, be suspicious. Don't submit to either of them, whether they come as an enemy or an advisor. By now, you should know the tricks of both an enemy and a false advisor. I seek forgiveness from Allah, from words, from words that are without deeds. Empty talk holds no promise. 
is like expecting children from a sterile man. Imam al-Busri is asking, who will help me? And he had his answer. He followed a guide. He followed a mursid. He followed a shaykh, the inheritor of a prophet. All those who have sought help against their ego, following a guide. The protocol that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to this earth is that the only way of controlling your ego is by handing its reins over to a prophet or the inheritor of a prophet. If you don't do that, then your ego is your master. Some may say, I have one. Is that one knocking you wall to wall to tell you how sick you are and how to become well? If he is, and he's not asking anything from you, hold on tightly to him. If that one is praising you non-stop, he's not telling you that you are sick, he's not knocking you wall to wall, and he's taking things from you and asking things from you, run away. Because that guide has no need for anything except his Allah. But most, they like that kind of guides who will praise them. Not the kind who says, be careful, you are sick. Take this medicine. Because this sickness, if you don't take the medicine now, its only cure is the fire. And I don't want you to go into the fire. As Sultan al-Arifin, Hazrat Bayazid al-Bistami is saying, Qadaslah Sir, whoever has no shaykh, his shaykh is shaitan. This way of tariqat, it is the only way that will let us to defeat our ego. This is not a system that was just here five years ago, 500 years ago. It came from the Holy Prophet wasalam, himself. And it continued from that time up till today. And it is a favor to us from our Lord because the Shaykh is the one who cares for his murids. The Shaykh is the one who is showing muhabbat to his murids. The Shaykh is the one who is non-stop watching his murids and working and giving from himself to make them reach to safety. Sahib al-Sayyib is saying, we are too far distant from the Prophet Prophet came 1400 years ago. Then we say we are following the awliya, the shaykhs. Are we following them? Are we really obeying what they are saying to us? Or when we are in their front, in front of them, eh, yes, you are right. And as soon as we move away according to our ego again, then you are not following. You are not. You are just following your ego again. And don't expect happiness. Don't expect peace. Because as much submission you have to that one, that much happiness is going to come to you. You can go far or you can go near to him. It doesn't matter. The awliya can reach you anywhere. The whole thing now is just like you are thinking, Allah is watching me. Is it good for me to do this? No. My shaykh is watching me. Would I do this in front of him? Ask yourself. This action that I'm doing right now, if he's watching me physically, am I going to do it? If you're still finding yourself saying about that wrong action, I'm going to do it, then definitely you lost your faith. And if you're finding, saying, I'm not going to do it, then do you think there's one wall separating you and your shaykh, or one mile, or one thousand miles? You think he's not watching your actions? You think he's not watching you? The love of Allah and the Prophet ﷺ. Obedience to Allah and the Prophet ﷺ. It is found in the obedience of the Shaykh. This is why the peer of this way, Shahi Naqshbandi, is saying, My sons, love of Allah cannot be reached without a Shaykh paving your way. O oh believers, in this first Juma of Shawwal, we should make our intention to follow that one who will help us fight our egos and be protected from our shaitan. We should make intention to follow properly and sincerely. We should make intention to follow the proper teachings 
of the Holy Prophet والسلام, and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not according to our nafs and not according to shaitan but according to the guide that would lead us to the Prophet and to Allah. Wa min Allah tawfiq. Fatiha. Astaghfirullah. 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 Lazim alazim. La ilaha illa. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد شيخ كرير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد شيخ كرير لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت المصاب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت المصاب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت المصاب 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 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 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 Bismillahirrahman